Xbox, record this, is a podcast celebrating all things gaming, food, and the good old days. If you'd like to find out more, head to xboxrecordthis.com. Oh, hello, Daddy D. Wally here, and welcome to Xbox Record This, episode 25, boys. We did it. We are almost halfway to 50. 50 is almost 52 weeks. 52 weeks is a year. We are halfway through a year of Xbox Record This. It is an honor to share the floor and the mic with you guys. Joining me, as always, is not Chipotle Bear, unfortunately, uh, Chipotle Bear is still, for some reason, he's an administrator. He is stuck at a football game, and he is just there. He is at Jefferson County Stadium right now, just being a noob, standing in the cold, watching the Bear Creek Bears probably losing right now. So, unfortunately, he is not joining us. But, fortunately, the assistant, he's, hold the assistant on. to the go-host. Yeah, you host. forgot to add he's probably crop dusting, just crop dusting everywhere <laughs> while he's there. Right? Just Good left and right. Point. Yeah. Yes. By the way, Chance probably doesn't see my crop dusting uh, clips. Did I post that on Instagram? I don't know. But I posted it on Facebook. And of course, but boy, I don't know where he is. Anyway. What's Facebook? Guest. Is that the thing that used to be called or that's now yeah, they're called rebranding. Uh, anyway, Metaverse joining us or something? Our first <laughs> official guest. For the first time ever, he's in the industry, and what I'm and what I mean by in the industry, he is an in art industry, the best friends industry, Xbox hardcore gamer. Joining us for the first time on Xbox Record This, please welcome to the show, Jay Bizzle. Jay Bizzle, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks, D Wally. Uh, it's 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 good to be here. Uh, I, I think I'm the only person in the world at this point who's listened to every minute of every podcast. I'm pretty sure I I'm the only one who gets to claim that. Uh, and uh, and so you know I, I appreciate uh, you letting me be here, and I'm excited to you know everybody likes the sound of their own voice at the end of the day, so I'm excited to hear what I sound like on the other side uh next week when i'm driving my 45 minute one-way commute uh downtown to carry so yep thanks they for having me, me both we're glad you're here bogus bogus is an old friend we'll get into uh, you know how we met jay bizzle but first bogus you brought up some stats and i want you to know that you may be right you're probably the only one besides the three of us that have listened to every episode but exciting news bubble boy um I'm looking at our stats right now. We finally got the 18 to 22 year old range. We finally have one listener who listened to our show. So shout out to him. We did it. We've got every age from zero to like 60. So we also have, um, it's almost like 18 countries and 50% are Apple Cod, Apple podcasts, 20% Spotify, maybe 20% on overcast. And 5% Google Podcast is probably Jay Bizzle right there. Gentlemen, I wanted to do a this episode centered around celebrating 20 years of Xbox history. In addition to our 25th episode, I think it lined up very well to our 25th episode, 20 years. Let's introduce Jay Bizzle. Why don't you give me a quick little two-minute summary of your life in gaming and then up until you the moment where you first played Xbox and everything changed forever. Go ahead, JBiz. Yeah, so uh couple just real quick and and I don't want to be the guy who's a guest host and start shouting out to everybody, but this will help your uh, cause with the with the teenagers. So I, I do have a couple kiddos uh who I teach. I'm also an educator like you fellows and uh and they heard I was doing a podcast cuz I told them, of course. And uh so shout out to Beck and shout out to Sean. Uh they both they both said that they promised they'd listen and and maybe continue listening if I if I shout it out to them. So there you go. Um, wait, wait. Are they Mass Effect fans? 
you know, I I I think uh, Ooh, one of them's a big Fortnite guy. So yeah, yeah, Mass, Mass Effect, Effect might fan. be a little bit before their time. You and Beck Beck show. is a PC player, so I'm guessing I'm I'm guessing probably not. But I, but I'll have to ask. I'll have to ask. So yeah. All right, but um, anyway, I I got my first Nintendo uh, NES original NES um, when I was in first grade, and for Christmas, and I got Mario Brothers, the original Mario Brothers, and uh, and the original Legend of Zelda, and uh, it took me. I think I mentioned this actually in one of my reader emails. I think I was twelve years, twelve or thirteen before I beat that game. It took me six six or seven years, you know, to finally beat that game. And uh, by that time, I could beat, you know, Mario with one life all the way through, you know, and but then that Legend of Zelda was tough. Anyway, love, love the NES. So many great memories on that. You talk about the good old days and it. it's always just immediate nostalgia, you know, with sleepovers and, and, and all of that. So um, I, I kind of got out of gaming. I, I bought a Super Nintendo when it first came out, the SNES system and played a ton of Street Fighter 2 on that. I was big into fighters, so I played that. Mortal Kombat 2 was a great game on that and um tons tons of you know just great great games great memories um i got a nintendo 64 when when it came out but i didn't play it that much and and d wally you'll probably agree with why just you know other than the a couple a couple of key games there just wasn't much on there um and so i kind of got out of gaming actually and 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 towards the end of high school i was i really barely played and so when I when I uh, started college, I had a couple roommates, and one of them bought a PlayStation Two. And so I played, uh, no, maybe it was a PlayStation One. I'm sorry, a PlayStation One. And I played Grand Theft Auto Three on that thing until I think I almost destroyed that disc. I mean, I just fell in love with video gaming again. So got back into it and played uh, a lot of my Wait. friends' games. GTA Three would have been ps2 because that was the 3d ones and that okay yeah, that came ps2 yep 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 i think you're right i think you're correct and ps2 was kind of the xbox era right it was ps2 and xbox kind of right around each other okay yeah. yeah so that that was it and um and then i had another friend who had an xbox so i i never owned my own original xbox so when we do our top, top five i'll preface it with that um, I still did play a number enough games to kind of to, to fill out a top five. But anyway, my wife ended up buying me uh, when we first got married a uh, PlayStation 2. And so that was my first like and that was just, to this day, she'll tell you that's the biggest mistake she ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and you fellas, you fellas can appreciate that. Uh, you know, she she just she just says, man, well, I just didn't know what I was doing. I was young and dumb. So, yeah. So shout out to my wife. And In fact. Had you had you just let her do what Dan's wife did yeah. last week? Is that why? <laughs> the four days oh, on no, girls no, trip. No, but yeah, yeah, I probably should have. But no, she just didn't know what she was doing, you know. And uh, once once she started realizing I, that I had a problem uh, with game addiction, she uh, she realized real quick. But. But anyway, yeah, so – and shout out to my wife because I'm in my bedroom right now because it's the only place where I thought I could get some decent sound without a bunch of feedback. Apparently, that's not quite the case. She's downstairs sleeping on the couch, and so I got to go wake her up. And and remember, this is East Coast down here, so it's it's uh, it's 10.51 right now p.m. So, so shout out to my wife for sure for a number of reasons. Um, just like you fellas, I, I'm blessed to uh, be married to, a, to an amazing individual. But yeah. But anyway, so she bought me the PlayStation 2. I, I, I played and eventually – Eventually, she uh, even upgraded me to an Xbox 360 for Christmas. And so when that thing came out, I got an Xbox 360, and, and that was it. I was sold on Xbox the moment I got the 360. So that was my first real introduction to getting an Xbox and falling in love with the controller. Uh, it took me a while to get used to. I actually did not like it when I first started. Um, but I never really messed with the original Xbox, that big old thing. So it, within probably a month, I was like, you know what? This is better than the PlayStation controller. And that was it. That was it for me. I was sold. I, I haven't owned a single PlayStation since. Uh, I've I've upgraded just about every console, mid generation, you know, all, all of it. I've pretty much owned them all. So currently playing is lucky enough to be playing a Series X like you fellas. And uh, yeah, I'm never going back to PlayStation. Game Pass is unreal. And so that's that's it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We just got to keep it in mind. Jeff Bogus has a delay. Hey, Bogus, I wanted to say quickly, do you play you play PlayStation games too as well? I remember you borrowed somebody's PS4 and you've played uh, a lot of those classics. You you still dabble on yep, PlayStation. Yep, yep, you yep. play you play everything. I you, do. You, yeah. 
And maybe you'll buy it when it's right. less hideous and less expensive. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I'm sorry. I, go what ahead. what was your favorite PS4 game then? So, I got no. I I borrowed my uh, my wife's cousin um, has he he works for Best Buy and he's a huge gamer and so he owns all the consoles and he's into hard copies. I'm all digital now, boys. I, I only buy digital, but he's into hard copies. So he has a huge library. He's got like a museum basically of every console. Anyways, he let me play. Um, and 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 you guys have not talked about it as one of the greats on PS4, but it really is. And that's Ghost of Tsushima. I am telling you, man, that game is probably my favorite game on the PS4. Um, God of War was great. I played through that. So, you know, basically what happened is I got it one summer and being a teacher, I'm lucky enough to have some extra time on my hands. And I knocked through, um, three of the uncharted. I played uncharted one. I skipped two because I knew I, I just wasn't going to make it all the way through. I watched it. I watched it on stream, That's a big um, but I didn't actually play it. And then I played three and played four. So I did get through uncharted. Um, I didn't play last of us. That's a game I'd like to go back and play just yeah. because it's just, you know, no but, but that's exactly, yeah. So that's why I in. But Ghost of Tsushima was probably one of my favorite games I played that year. It's just an incredible game, and it's it's just they do so many things different. No HUD. It's just it, I mean it was just cool the way with the wind. Uh, it, yeah, I, yeah. So, I loved anyway, it. by the far wind, that was the best the, game I played, yeah. and I love the PS4. I played Spider Man. I love that. So eventually I'll borrow my buddy's uh, PS5 and and play you know all the games on there. But but yeah. But all, all right, on, all right. On enough on PlayStation. Xbox, okay, we're celebrating Xbox. Anyway, moving on. Uh, just kidding. PlayStation 4, okay. I, I don't like it as much as everyone else. I don't think it's that great. But anyway, j very quickly, can you explain to us... Uh, it's it's okay. The PS4 is okay. It's all third-person action games. It's the same thing. You've played it all. What's that one we forgot? Days Gone... And, but you, you uh, didn't listen to Jabez then because what he just said was how different Ghost of Tsushima Ghost is good. Yes, was, I'll play and that he's right. It, when I get a PS5 down the road, probably the last PS4 game I'll play. I don't think I'm going to do Horizon or Detroit or Days Gone or Last of Us Part Two. No, I have no desire to play that. So, Jabez, I do think you should play the first Last of Us. Big, uh, big mistake missing Days Gone. It is, you know, so highly regarded and. It's so iconic. Dear it's God, like, no! He needs to play Uncharted Two. If he I missed the, I, Uncharted no, Two, oh yeah, like Uncharted one two. of the best. You need to play Uncharted, Uncharted Two. Games. I can't believe you skipped that. Man. Uncharted Two was a huge leap. We're gonna talk about Uncharted don't, later. Anyway, don't uh, don't do anything until you play Uncharted Two. <laughs> Moving on quickly, can you explain to us, Bogus, the origin story of your gamer tag? And how much gamer score you have? Oh man! Uh, <laughs> so this is actually a teacher story. Um, so I started teaching the year before I, I uh, married, uh, got married, and my my I, I mean I don't think it was my second day in class. I, I'm about 23 years old, much younger than I am now. Um, I just had my 40th, by the way, fellas. Turned 40 last Friday, so I am officially middle aged. I know you oh, guys had that debate a few episodes I back on what it cutoff. means. I promise you, at 40, you're middle aged. There's no doubt about it. So. All right, all right. But um, I'm sitting in class, and uh, and I, I I walk in. It's it's my I said my second day. My first day was an orientation, so you know, no students. Um, or maybe it was my it was my first day with kids. Sorry. So first day with kids, I walk in. And I say, good morning, guys, you know, and I'm introducing myself and I tell them my name is Mr. Bogus. Uh, it's B-O-G-G-U-S like bogus, but with two G's. And um, and one of the and one of the kids raises his hand. He says, yo, 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 uh, you know, Mr. Bogus, is it cool if I just call you Mr. Bizzle? And so that's where the Bizzle came from. And 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 that and right after that is when, you know, my wife uh, got got me. um the the xbox and so i was like it's it's got to be jay bizzle and so jay bizzle was taken and so the zero zero two was just awesome. thrown on there and i took it you know so that's that's where that's the origin of jay oh bizzle. that is awesome yeah. that's a great story yeah. i don't think i've ever heard that story before that's great was that at bear creek oh is that bear creek i didn't know that yeah wow. yeah wow. Yep, yep, yep. yeah yeah because i student taught at dakota and then uh yep and then my first year actually teaching was at bear creek Nice. So at least it wasn't J Bizzle 007. He used to be a wannabe Bond guy. Boys, thank you so much for that introduction, Bogus. Let's get into what have we been playing. Chance, I'm very excited to hear what have you been playing. You did inform me earlier that you beat Far Cry 6. Are you going to get a review of that for that in Scarlet Nexus next week? Yes, 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 yes. It's it's 
it's been a, a horrific week um, for the Gateway community, and um, it's just been it's been crazy. I haven't had a whole lot of time. I actually haven't. I was telling you, D Wally, before the first hour I've even had to be able to play this week. Um, I sat down was just earlier today, so it's been since the weekend um, since we probably pretty much since we last talked. Um, that I've played much. So just finished up Far Cry 6, and I'll have a, an official review for it next week. Uh, Bogus, what have you been playing? What about you, J-Biz? What have you been playing? So, um, you know, I really, really got into Hades Hardcore. Uh, and Chance, I know you can appreciate that. Dan, I, I don't know how much you've played with it. And, I, and Jose mentioned he kind of got into it, but I know he was trying to... trying to. I just... It took me a while. I think it took me about 65 runs before I got my first... You know, I got through. I escaped for my first time. And uh, about two, about 130 runs later, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm over 200 runs in. And it, the, it's just such a great game, man. Every run is different. Um, it's, it's so many different weapons, so many different ways to customize your character as you're going through and the heat levels, you know, it, and if you know, if you've played it, you know what I'm talking about. That adds different custom, even at the end game. And it's, it's almost like, I don't know. I've never played, I've never gotten into a rogue, roguelike game before. So this is very, my first really introduction to it. And it's just an incredible game. Um, the, all the different talking, even, even after 150 hours, you still, there's still new conversations I'm continually having with the different characters. So. Yeah. Did you, would you have played it had it not been on game pass you know that's one of the games that maybe i would have only because it got such big hype when it was on pc um just huge huge hype and 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 i was excited to give it a go um and so but 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 there's all uh, you know i can't say for sure and it could have been one where i waited for like a 20 dollars sale in another two years you know so the fact that yeah. i was able to play it day one on xbox when it first came out was absolutely huge yep. and then you know this is kind of silly but i i you know d wall you mentioned being in a rut a little bit of a gaming rut, and, and sometimes that's what happens with gamers right you're trying to find that next game while you're waiting for a specific game to come out and so that's kind of where i've been lately is i'm kind of just i'm waiting for halo i'm waiting for maybe battlefield if if if, if it works out i'm kind of in the same boat as you guys i think i'm gonna wait and see approach on that but um i've been playing <laughs> you know and here's another thing about game pass right you go and you look for a game and you know what rory mcelroy pga tour sitting there on the uh, ea pass and i'm like why not load that thing up? I love golf. And so I've gotten into that. And I mean, it's just that, you know, I'm not going to put a hundred hours into that game, but in 20 hours, I'm going to just love every second of that. And I didn't have to pay a dime for that. So just an incredible, you know, uh, call. And I know you guys, you can't stress it enough and you say it all the time, but so just, you know, that's, that's just my uh, agreement with you that a game like that, which is old and it's not a great game, but it's, but it's something that I know I'm going to like and, and I don't have to pay for it. So that's, you know, in addition, to what 15 bucks a month so yeah so that's what i've been playing bogus i gotta ask did you buy madden this year are you, you I, no i oh yeah go ahead you know what i didn't oh, so so d wall so is referring of, to so uh the, the year yeah no yeah yeah so i had a you want to talk about an addiction uh i i mad 19 and me we it was it was bad like it was bad uh i i mean over you know when games start to measure in days and not in hours and it's not like two days it's not four days it's measuring in the 20s and 30s that's when you know and that's one year you know in one year and so i really got into ultimate team and got crazy in mad 19 and and at the end of mad 19 i thought you know what there's so many great games i missed there's so many things i didn't get to do uh like see my kids grow up <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah so i was like i gotta put that one away uh it's you know it's starting to affect my personal life because you just you keep wanting to get better right when you start competing online and 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 it just you i just got you know held into that and i mean i was i was you know they they uh played weekend league and i was even top 100 one time and all that time i i got into the top 100 and so i mean i, mean, I got pretty good i was never playing for money or anything like that but i was pretty good and uh but it just wasn't worth it man i just missed out on too much uh with other games and then of course my personal life that was just way too much gaming so um yeah so i did not 
So you are part of the reason why there yeah. is no connected franchise. Yeah, franchise. no, you're right. I mean, as, lo as long as people yeah. are going to keep yeah. spending yeah. money. first. Yeah, as long XRT. as people keep spending money yep. on those cards, Breaking which I news. did. I put in my fair share of money, uh, you know, to get better. It's just, it's not going to happen. I got to cut him off. So sorry. Yeah. So I apologize. Get Bogus out of here. going to start muting him for himself. I can't take this. We're about to kick off our first contributing guest uh, who was obsessed with Madden and contributed to the Madden problem. Yeah, make make Just note actually, of the timestamp that one Screw first Madden guest without, boot. Uh, uh, chance, impressive. did you see what I've been playing? By any chance? No? I've been playing Bioshock Infinite, the complete edition. I had bought the original trilogy or the remastered trilogy last year. Only because hey, I yeah. had played two. Good for I you. I played one in Infinite. Uh, remember when I bought a 360 during the Xbox One area to play some games that I missed before backwards compatibility? Anyway, it was this random time in 2014, 2015. And I kind of flew through Infinite. I'm playing it right now, you guys. This game is awesome. I'm loving Infinite so far. The setting is so cool. I love having... What's the girl's name? Is it Emily? I can't remember. That's so bad. Is it? I don't know. Anyway, um, I love having her around. She's a great companion. That sounds right. It's been too long for Eddie me. But loved it back then when it's, I played it's been the way last too episode. long. I remember I compared the two, having the two companions. I love the interactions you have with her, the little small dialogue you have with her. I'm really taking my time exploring everything, hearing all the dialogue choices, loving Infinite. I finally played Bioshock 2 last year for the first time, so I might as well play. I figured my, I should play Infinite again. And I'm really enjoying it. And I saw that Wario tweeted earlier. It's on sale right now for $9.99, the, the Bioshock collection. Go buy it if you haven't played it for 10 bucks. It's an awesome collection. It doesn't look... Um, it's not like a complete 4K And that's remaster. all three games? Uh, yeah, it's all three games. Have you played it, Bogus? Yeah. Um, but like I said, it looks good, but it's. I, I wish they could have gone more like they did with the uh, comparing it to the Alan Wake remaster. Alan Wake looks way better, and I feel like um, actually, I went back and played the original Alan Wake and played it. It plays the same, but oh, it's super fuzzy. Like I remember they were saying it's like 540p or something. So yeah, that was a little rough. The I have to give the remake a lot more credit. It looks a lot better. Speaking of Alan Wake, I did complete that. I got all the achievements. I have to say I enjoyed the DLCs way more than I thought I was going to play it because it's straight to the point. There's a lot more action, a lot more tension. And it wasn't as slow and as boring as some of the parts were in Alan Wake where you're just walking around. Still, I highly recommend Alan Wake if you haven't played it. Shout out to Alan Wake Remastered. And Chance, I don't know if you saw this, but I tweeted, so I took a picture. I have every achievement for Alan Wake, Alan Wake American Wasteland, Alan Wake Remastered, and Control. I mean, that's... No, I... I tweeted I, it with Xbox. I saw. I think Chance. I saw. Okay. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I am the... Oh, and Quantum Break. Oh, my gosh. I am the complete remedy simp uh i got every achievement on all their games on xbox so the other thing i wanted to say bogus is you be pride after this after i beat bioshock i plan on getting uh hollow knight and that is on game cap game pass and i know you love that game so i wanted to let you know that that's next on my list and then uh bogus you totally forgot incredible game uh the 103 gigabyte update and pre-download for forza horizon Five. I don't know if you're a big Forza fan, Bogus, but if you haven't played this game, games you need to. They're so much fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. but it's actually Forza, five. Yeah. I thought I said Forza Horizon Five. Anyway, it is there at preload. We'll get into that later. But yeah, 103 gigs. Amazing game. Can't wait. For I Forza know. In a couple weeks. Yeah, I Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is incredible. And if if anybody has not played Hollow Knight, you've act, act, you know, and you like games like Ori and the Blind Forest and platforming, that game is incredible. And it is long. It's a lot longer than Ori, so I'll yeah. just warn you. So Ooh, you just need to know that it is. But but good. it's absolutely worth your time. Um, but I just, you know, I, I know how you are with some of those, you know, 30 hour plus games. And I think I think you can get through it, but don't expect to be a completionist and get through it in 20 oh, hours. Oh, no, I'm like not going to get with Ori. I'm not so. complete. Hollow Knight. I mean, Ori was very special to me and in, in my heart, so I had to get everything and beat that hard. Let's move into the news, guys. Xbox yeah. news time. Actually, we're going to start off with some PlayStation news. We're just going to keep talking about PlayStation, apparently. I'm just curious, guys. 
Um, I, we love Uncharted. Bogus has played it. Bubble Boy is a big Uncharted fan. Me, personally, I think that's my favorite Sony IP, uh, that's my favorite franchise from PlayStation. I'm obsessed with Uncharted. I have all the Platinums. Speaking of getting all the achievements, I have all the Platinums for the original PS3 Uncharted, 1, 2, and 3, then the PS Vita Uncharted, Lost Lake, or er, Golden Abyss. Then I have the, all the Platinums for the remakes on PS4 and Platinums for Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy, which some people like Lost Legacy. I didn't I didn't like it at all. Anyway, moving into the news. The Uncharted movie trailer was released today. And just a quick little synopsis. Based on one of the best-selling critically came video game series of all time, Uncharted introduces audiences to the young street smart Nathan Drake, Tom Holland, and showcases his first treasure hunting adventure adventure with his rise cracking partner mark Wahlberg or sully victor sully sullivan the two go into dangerous pursuit of the greatest pre- treasure never found while also tracking clues that may also lead to nathan's long lost brother i gotta go straight to you bubble boy what was your initial impressions of this trailer just tell me what you're thinking i it, I, I love Marky Mark. I don't. I have such a hard time picturing him as as. Um, Wait, let me say this really quick. Why didn't they just Victor? Give, right. Yeah. I, so. It's. I, so, sorry, Victor. So. Why didn't they just give him a mustache? Why didn't they just give Mark Wahlberg a mustache? That would have made yeah, a huge Victor difference. Yeah, Victor Sullivan, Sully. Yeah, I, Victor. Yeah, I. It's. And it's one of those like I'm sure if you never played the games, you'll be like, oh, he's great in it. And I th- and he didn't do anything like it looked. And it's a preview, right? So they're going to showcase a lot of the highlights. But um, I just it's it's such the opposite of of who I would have wanted or who I would picture there, right? Like I I don't know. I have a hard time getting past that, and I know that's wrong of me, but. What about Tom Holland? Do you have any problems with Tom Holland? Actually, one of the top comments in this YouTube video, one of the highest comments said, uh, why does Mark Wahlberg look more like Nathan Drake than Tom Holland does? I'm I'm shocked. Like, my problem with Tom Holland is is one, he's just... Well, he's yeah, and I think, yeah. I just see him as Spider-Man. I'm Here's sure. what I think. He's... So it's because, and when you read the description, I think it's it says a young something something something, right? And so it might be some it, the this storyline I am assuming takes place before, and I'm sure there's not a connection, but that they're assuming it takes place before any of the other games, right? Like he's an older dude in four for sure, um, and and however many years before that was one. Yeah, this is to- probably even well before any of those. Shout out to Shinobi. He's on Twitter. We got to get him on the show. He had a really good uh, tweet reaction. He said, "It's it's really hard to after seeing these characters for fourteen years for one year way, and then for them to introduce them this way. And for me to see him like this, it's hard. I want to be excited, but you know that's true. But I I feel like they could have done a better job with the casting. I like Tom Holland. I like him a lot. I think he's a good actor, but it's just so tough for me to see him as Drake. And another thing is, you said it was a prequel." But there's that scene of him falling out of the jet, which was Uncharted 3, I think. And then someone in the comments also said, it's such a weird decision to start out with Uncharted 4 and morph it into a prequel because they're talking about finding uh, Nathan's brother, which happens in four, Uncharted 4. Bogus, what was this, your reaction to this? And will you see this in theater? Or do you feel like you're going to wait to see this? I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably it's probably a wait, but um, not because I'm not excited. And and obviously, I just played and and the point you made that Shinobi had you know made about being 14 years doesn't apply to me because I didn't play the games till just last summer. So for me, I definitely like after just coming relatively fresh off of all but two, and 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 I'll put it on my backlog. I'll put it on my backlog, but. Um, I was excited one because you know the same way D Wall is a Tom Cruise simp. I am a Marky Mark simp. I, I love Mark Wahlberg, and I think he is just great in ev- just about everything he does. The other guys is probably one of my 
favorite comedies of all time. Um, and, and I just think he's great. So, so I'll go see it just cause I'm in love with Mark Wahlberg. And, um, uh, but, but, you know, Tom Holland, I was, was see to me, to, the Tom Holland, uh, cast was a little bit more interesting to me than, than the Mark is as a uh, Sully, but both of them are, seem young. And so that's why I think maybe you go the prequel le- route because both of them seem a little bit younger than the characters are in, in, in the video games. But yeah, I'm excited. Um, you know, uh, the only reason I say I won't go see it in theaters is because I, I hit up one movie every two years. You know, the last movie I saw was, was Endgame, and I have not seen a movie in theaters since then. And and, and, and that's not just because of COVID. I just, I probably would not have hit up a movie anyway. So um, I just, I, I'm a big guy. I'd rather sit on my couch and drink what I want to drink. And unless I'm going to go see the movie with somebody um like dune dune is probably a movie i'll go see in theaters when it comes out because i think it's worth it to go see it in imax and and i'm in love with that book so but yeah but overall it's it's a wait and see but not because i'm not excited I, and i am intrigued i would say if nothing else and the trailer is awesome i mean if you take away those casting the trailer was fun i mean it yeah, was just it was fun, fun to watch and and i, I and, and and it did get me excited um and some of the things he was doing in the jet i thought that was cool and and it, yeah so so tom holland i like and I, i'm interested and excited to see what how how it, you know, how it uh, reviews and if people love it. And it's, I think it's going to be a definitely a movie people love or hate. I mean, it's just, I just think that's kind of the way a lot of these video games cast as movies are set up. So we'll see. Yeah. I think Mark Wahlberg would have been fine as a appropriately aged Nathan Drake than Sully. Anyways, let's move on to the next news item, kind of Xbox related, especially the original Xbox. Oh, by the way, Bogus, the next movie you're going to see in theaters, is, of course, is going to be uh, Top Gun, Memorial Day, and Mission Impossible, of course. Anyway, a decade later, and this is coming from VideoGamesChronicle.com, Ubisoft has greenlit what will be its first mainline Splinter Cell uh, in more than a decade, gentlemen. So finally, supposedly, that's according to development sources that have told us that the title's been to production and means of winning back uh, the fans, and to revive the franchise. It's not clear which studios are working on it, but it plans it might be someone outside of the uh, traditional Montreal studio. Bubble Boy, we all know how I feel about Splinter Cell. Um, what do you think of this news? Is it happening? Is it finally happening? Or are you holding your breath on this one? I... It has to. I think Ubisoft must, they must listen to the show, right? Because we drop references <laughs> yep, to it all almost on a weekly basis. Like, come on. The only thing that I could see happening is if, if like, whoever's in charge of all this just wants to have, like, the greatest April Fool's joke ever. They're going to be, like, this giant reveal for it's a Sam Fisher Fortnite skin. Yeah, that's totally possible. <laughs> like, have all this hype for it. And I'm not holding my breath that they won't do that until I see it. I know. That's why I'm like, I'll believe it when I see it. And I am so hopeful that it's something real and it's a game, um, a, a true Splinter Cell, Sam Fisher game. But I, they've they've done us dirty for too long. So, Can you believe it's been, geez, almost 10 years? 2013 was like, oh, breaking news. Breaking news, you guys. Chipotle Bear has made it here. He is joining us, joining us as always, on our 25th episode of Xbox. Record this. Joining us, Chipotle Bear. I am extremely cold right now. I was at a football game. It is literally like 40 degrees outside, but I am warming up my heart right now. seeing Mr. Justin A. Bogus joining us here so good to see you buddy uh sorry i'm late guys continue where you were no it's uh it's great to be here jose and and when you when my heart broke when i got on here and, and didn't see you in this in this room um and and so d wally told me you'd be here later so I, i'm i'm stoked to see you and we'll have to catch up after the show for a little bit for sure and, Absolutely. and we do have a bet, Jose, so you have to see who – tell us who wins this um, on the over-under, how many times you crop dusted during the third quarter alone. I think we're going to have some Welcome, surprises. Let me Chipotle just say Bear. that. Spoiler okay. Glad okay. you made it to this amazing four-person episode. We were just talking about Uncharted trailer and Ubisoft 
uh, announcing a new Ubisoft or sorry Splinter Cell game. Quickly, Bogus, have you played Splinter Cell or are you interested in this game? I'm not sure if you're a Splinter Cell fan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll be interested either way. I've enjoyed the uh, Splinter Cell games. My favorite games weren't weren't necessarily the most popular among among the crowd. I enjoyed Conviction is probably one of my actually favorites, and 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 not that people didn't like it, but it definitely wasn't considered a top game. But I loved it, so I, I'm excited to see what happens. And I played a couple others, so yeah. I mean, I I think it is time. Um, there's a lot of people who love that, you know, just that brand of Splinter Cell, and they're and 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 like you said, they've kind of. They've just cheapened it a little bit, I think, in the last couple of years with some of the stuff they've done with the you know, skins and stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, if they're going to do a real Splinter Cell game, go for it and, and, and make some money off of it. And hopefully it's good. You know, hopefully it's good. So, Chipotle Bear, we don't have to talk about Splinter Cell because I know you're kind of met on that. But I do want to hear your Uncharted movie trailer reaction. I got to hear what you're thinking. Please. I'm kind of surprised by the boy's takes. And Jay Biz is kind of excited. So Chipotle Bear, please, you're a fan of Uncharted. What did you think of the trailer in general and the casting? Uh, I am a huge fan of, of Uncharted. Uh, even though I know it's a PlayStation exclusive, uh, I've played all of them and enjoyed all of them. Really enjoyed four on the PS4. Like that was one of the few I had to play when when I still had a PS4. Um, you know, here, here's the thing. I think everybody wanted Nathan Fillin for for Nathan Drake just because of the voicing. I mean, literally just the the visual look of him. Um, and not that he wouldn't have been great, but I also really I like Tom Holland. I think he has been an awesome Spider Man. I also it seems like he's been a really He's a really stand-up guy in real life. I really appreciate when actors are like that, where they seem really down to earth and really appreciative of the opportunities that they've been afforded. And so I'm sure he's pouring his heart and soul into this. So I'm excited. I mean, I, I hope one day we get to do a, a top five video game adaptations because I really appreciate that it's kind of it was it kind of a joke, joke anymore? genre for a long time. Like all the movies were just like, oh my god, they were atrocious. Uh... And now they're really kind of coming back because um well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying think about the new Mortal Kombat. Think about uh, Assassin's Creed. Think about, you know, and I'm not saying those were all great movies. We'll talk about that one day. I saw that eye roll. Uh, but yeah, also, I was going to say, I think, I think that list ended at the new Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it is, it, it's got to be possible to make great games that are based on video or great movies based on video games. <clears throat> it's just we're not there yet. So, um, I'm, I mean, I'm excited. Will I be first night in the theater? Uh, probably not. All right, uh, well, because I just don't get it for many movies Chipotle anyway. Bear. But I will definitely check That's it out. I'll, I'll definitely show support. Uh, and, always and positive. Let's I'll be surprised. That's what move I on say. to the next news topic, and I wanted to go over the Battlefield beta, the little blog post that they recently, you know, our old friends at Dice just wrote and released today. So they had a lot to talk about. They defended their specialists, and this is coming from EA's. Uh, official site for Battlefield, what we learned in the open beta. So here are the things that are going to change. They're going to increase the number of tanks that you experience in the first map from four to eight more vehicles. May changes to movement so you can strafe while you slide and vault while you're vault moving objects. So I like that because sometimes I can't clam that, that stupid Jeep right by that building and resurgence Island. Jose, I know you know what I'm talking about. And a, a nearby grenade indicator will be added. Uh, before, you had no idea where there is a grenade, and they had that in every other game, so they put that back in. The elevators, they were broken, and supposedly they fixed them. So you'll see less funky behaviors from that. But then, so this is where it got a little concerning to me. So those are some quick fixes. So they talked about how uh, they called it a branch of the game. And this took place in August and branching us allows us to strip out all the unnecessary systems and content and mecha mechanics that are still under forms of testing and polishing. And uh, so this was a vertical slice of the game. We work hard to optimize this stamp out the critical bugs uh, and try for maximum compatibility for PC and hardware by stripping out other content and systems. We remove potential conflicts uh, that can cause problems later. So what I'm getting from this, guys, is that this test that we played 
was from a sample in August that was also stripped of lots of other things that were supposed to be in it. And we were still seeing lots of graphics issues. They did mention that there were bots. I forgot to say they're very high at the beginning. So you were killing a lot of bots at the beginning. So you were killing bots. I'm just concerned that this is not even a couple months old and we stripped out as much as we could to make it run as smooth as possible, but it's going to be ready within a month. This game is going to be ready to launch and we're going to fix all of these bugs. So they also talked about that they're fixing, they're adding a map, they're fixing the UI, which I complained about, which is all great. And I, I appreciate that you know, how open uh, and that they're addressing all these issues that I, I had with the beta. But I got to ask, straight to Bogus. Bogus, did you play the beta by any chance? I don't know if you played it. And uh, if you did, uh, what did you think of this tech test? I did. I, di I didn't play a ton of time. Um, I, let me just tell you, the worst time zone in America is Eastern Standard Time. Um, you know, especially when you, yeah, especially from your near Colorado. Cause it just, by the time you guys are ready to get on about 10 o'clock, I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's midnight. If I, I want to play with my friends, I want to hang out, but if I do, I'm going to be up till 3 AM. So, so I, I played, I didn't get to play with anybody. Um, uh, but I just jumped in there that game's really hard when you're not playing with people. Uh, so, but I, but I enjoyed it. I loved, um, I, I would, I would say my take on it was very similar to, to, to Chip Chipo's. Um, Chipotle bears. It, it, it was, it was fun. The customizing was cool. Being able to change up your, your loadout right off hand was cool. Um, but yeah, but it was buggy and, and that's what everybody's worried about, right? Everybody's worried about server crashes. Everybody's worried about the bugs and that's, 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 um, so yeah, I mean, it did not ease any of my concerns there as, as I think you guys all stated. So. Okay guys. So at this point, um, I'm jumping in. This is me interrupting the actual podcast. Um, so this is me talking as I'm editing the podcast at midnight on October 21st after we had just recorded. So at this point, <laughs> to all our listeners, I had been recording my voice through my uh, camera. My camera is my an old iPhone SE that I use for the camera. It was using my that as the microphone instead of this nice microphone that I'm using now. For some reason, unknown to me, I didn't know that was happening, obviously. And uh, uh, randomly, when after Chipotle Bear had come back into the show, he sent a text saying, what's up with Dan's mic? Why is it like this? Uh, Jose, no offense. I don't know why you didn't just tell me in the middle <laughs> instead of texting me, but I appreciate you looking out for me. Chipotle Bear uh, made, it, uh, made me aware that I was recording on a horrible mic. And I just would like to let everyone know that uh, for the past 42 minutes, I've been listening to the, the horrible audio on a uh, practice or not a, a draft podcast with my horrible audio that I created and been reacting and repeating everything that I was saying uh, with the horrible audio on that track and recording it now to make it sound better. So that's how dedicated I am to Xbox record this. I went back and literally listened to myself talk and re-record everything I've said now for 45 minutes. I love you guys. Xbox record this forever. You'll see here in a second when I come back in, I'm a little furious at Bubble Boy and Jay Bizzle for not telling me that my mic sounded like caca for 45 minutes, but we got through it. Um, I, I can't believe I did this. So yeah, uh, I love you guys. And when we, when it comes back in here, you'll see the audio will be better and I will be furious for having recorded horrible audio. But again, I, I had to fix it. One of my biggest pet peeves and one of my goals for the show is like, I, I hate bad audio on podcasts. So couldn't let it happen. I was listening to it. And I was like, this is just not, it's not going to fly. So here I am re-recording it and talking to myself. So here's back to the show. Love you guys. I noticed okay. that. Oh, hello. Daddy Diwali here. Welcome to Xbox Record This, episode 25. My assistant to the assistant to the co-host failed to tell me that I was using the wrong yeah. mic. And nobody yeah. noticed, including Bogus, which I feel like Bogus should have noticed too because he listens – he claims to listen to every episode. Mm, this sounds the same. I this love how you're how taking zero So I apologize. For this. 
I wouldn't know unless somebody else told me. And Jose literally came in the first thing he said in our text. Hey, is something wrong with Dan's you mic? Know your mic? Literally the on? first thing. No, Chance, I wouldn't know. Just like you wouldn't know until we tell you the same thing. We'd be like, hey, can you adjust your mic? Can you adjust your mic? I, I'm done. I'm muting. I'm muting Chance. I can't take this anymore. Our audience, I'm so sorry that I, we've been recording for 40 minutes and uh, until the assistant to the assist or the assistant to the co-host joins and tells me that my mic was not the correct mic, uh, I, I was using my camera's mic. So uh, I apologize. That's what I, was. I was close. Oh my! God. Why yeah, do you have so that one actually, hooked up to be on? That's what I, I, I don't. He didn't know that it was selected. Well, you, he didn't know. It was oh, selected. exactly. There's my there's 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 multiple to my I have to choose it. No, when I go in, I have to. No, choose. It, we talked no about this. No chance. Said, it literally. I said I have to choose. Oh my god! I'm using my own headphones. Really, anyway, let's move on. Let's get back to, back to the news. Back to chance, the news. Back to the news. Chance, I'll explain it to you. I have a my iPhone connected to my camera or to my computer. That's my webcam. When I turned it on, there must have been an update. And so for some reason, when I selected this as my camera, like I do every other time, it switched the mic to be my camera, not my microphone I had in. I would have no idea because every other time I would default unless I join in and I'm talking to you guys and someone says, like Jose did, what's with your mic? Anyway, moving on to the next. I'm skipping Battlefield. We're done. We're done. Moving on to a new story. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> It's been a great 25 episodes, folks. Yeah, it's been a great 20. <laughs> this is what we get. You know, and I was going to submit our episode to this woman on Twitter uh, who reviews podcasts. I can't even do that now because she's going to be like, look at these noobs in their noob recording process. Uh, very briefly, I'm going to skip it. See if these hit 25 million players. Big deal. Good job That's for them. actually, that, that it really is a big deal. That's a lot of people. That's like half of the Xbox One install base. So, congratulations to Sea of Thieves. Still need to finish the uh, Pirates DLC. We're going to skip that. Uh, an update. This is a technical update, which only I will appreciate because I don't think you guys even notice um, the new update. I don't know if it's actually out right now, but accessibility October Xbox update. We are going to finally, thank God. I'm very excited for this. And it's not even that big of a deal. We are finally going to have a 4k dashboard. In the past, it was 1080, and they upscaled it to 4K. Now we're going to have a crispy, clean dashboard. I cannot wait. They're, they are also adding an Xbox night mode and more. So night mode reduces and adjusts the light of your Xbox display and console at, at night. Oh, and your controller. I like that. I'll probably adjust it to where my controller is barely visible, and there are quick settings to switch between the two. So uh, I know uh, I don't actually... Bogus, do you did you notice this? Are you a big 4K like graphics hog like we are, or is this not that big of a deal to you? You know, to me personally, uh, this is, in my opinion, when when I first saw the news come out about this, it just seemed like a lot of PlayStation lovers trolling on Xbox, and that was the one <laughs> thing they could find to to just to bang on. Um, but, but I get it. I, I, I do understand that it's important to a lot of people to me. If nobody had told me it wasn't 4k and I have a 4k T, I have a nice Samsung. It's not the nicest one, but I have a cute, you know, a cute, you have a nice one. Yeah. It's you very have a nice. really nice TV. Yeah. 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 And, and I still wouldn't have noticed until somebody said, that's not 4k dude. And I would have been like, okay, show me 4k. And then when I see them side by side, obviously like anybody, you know, any imbecile can, can see there's a difference, but, I, but, I, but it, but it wasn't a big deal to me until everybody made it a big deal. So I'm, I'm excited for the people out there who this is a big deal for like, like me. You, I know you will notice. <laughs> and, and, and so that's, you know, it's, it, it should have happened probably six months ago, but they, but they yes. heard again, this is one thing that, that is different about Microsoft this time around is it really seems like when people complain about something, they, they do fix it. And I don't know why it took as long as it did. I think it should have probably happened sooner. But I also have zero understanding of how these things work. And so I'm sure that they went to work right on it as soon as the, the people started coming out and banging on it. And, and so we're finally getting that update. And, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys. Thank you. And, Jose, I want to jump to you. Uh, so there is going to be a dark mode. Are you a dark mode guy? And just some other things I'm seeing on this little accessibility night mode. It has like a display. You can have 40% dim, 80% filter, controller brightness, 20% power button brightness. So even on the consoles itself, you can dim that. I think that's actually really cool too. And you can set when night mode starts automatically. It says 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Are you a dark mode user, Chipotle Bear? And does this excite you at all? I am dark mode all day. 
uh, on all my devices. I think one, because it looks super clean, but actually it works a lot better for my eyes. And as someone who spends a significant amount of my time behind my computer screen or my video game screen, um, I really appreciate that feature for sure. Uh, you know, for people that like the light mode, great. Like, I don't hate it. I just, I prefer the dark mode. Um, I would say, I also think it's cool that they're doing the nighttime features, like the blue light reduction and stuff like that. I know some people think that's stupid. I, I believe in it. Like, you know, a couple of months ago, I bought some glasses that were like blue light blockers. And I was like, this is a waste of money. And I actually feel like I sleep better. So... Um, I'm all for that kind of feature. You know, it's also one of those where like, look, if you don't like it, then it doesn't really matter. Like it doesn't hurt you to have these features. It only helps the people that want them. So I think that's great. I'm actually in the same camp as Bogus of like, I actually didn't know until this article came out that it wasn't 4k because like, I just, I don't care. Like I, can I get to my game? Great. The game's in 4k. That's really all that matters. Uh, and here's the other part that I think why it may not have been initially. And yeah, I know the trolls were all over this is because, Anything that when you scale up 4K, that literally means four times the resolution, which is four times the data, which means it's using more of your system resources. And so if you really would rather say, would you rather have a 4K menu or be able to quick resume one more game? I would choose the game every day of the week, right? And so um, it may have been a calculated decision why they chose not to do that. Now, granted, there's lots of like actual computing resources in the Series X and Series S. So like maybe that's not the specific reason, but you know, again, it doesn't hurt me to have it. So I'm not mad that they're doing it. You know, if it's one less thing that we can get made fun of for, bring it on. Chance, do you have any reaction to this or is your OLED just perfect and you just don't notice yeah, anything I mean, I'll, on it? It's, it's always... I've got the best TV made, so might as well just keep getting all that 4K content on it. Uh, I will say, Bogus, you're right. In general, I don't think most people would notice it. But because I, I have both, right? So I'm able to play my Series X for majority of the time. And then I have my Series S upstairs on a 1080p TV or monitor. And, and I do notice it. And it's only because I have the Series X, though. Like if I was just a casual gamer playing, you know, on your high screen, your upscale to 4K or your, or your 1080p TV or monitor, people aren't going to notice. But for somebody who's been using 4K for a while now and appreciates that extra detail, it's definitely noticeable, and I am very excited. Let's go into the next quick news item. And I just wanted to kind of cover this as a, a little announcement, more or less. I, we don't really have much to say about this because we're not big uh, PC gamers. But Halo Infinite's great journey on PC. This was an uh, article that was released today. Um Almost two years ago, 343 Industries and Xbox embarked on a journey to bring the entirety of Halo, the MCC, to PC. After 23 months, six game launches, and eight seasons of contents, 343 and Halo have entered a new era of where PC is the center of everything we do. So in addition to that, they are now going to launch Halo Infinite, a truly first uh, PC first experience day and date with console that has not happened for this is a big deal we do not play on pc uh, along with this announcement was amd they have this awesome looking uh amd radeon 69 amd radeon rx 6900 xt halo infinite limited edition graphics card i think it looks sweet jose i don't know if you got a chance to look at it but uh as a tech person i know the design of it is so cool. It looks like you can even see, I'm looking at it right now. It kind of looks like the chief's visor in the front and then behind it's even got the little blue light in the center of his helmet where Cortana or his AI is stored. It is super sweet. Uh, so shout out to all those PC players. I have to ask, I know none of us are big PC gamers, but Bogus, have you ever been interested now, especially since PC gaming has grown so much to make the switch to PC and game strictly on a nice computer versus on consoles because you can use a controller on all your favorite games you can use xbox you can use achievements and then you'd even be able to play playstation games on there now with we just saw god of war being announced for pc and days gone and i'm sure all the others will be on there uh do you have any interest in pc gaming bogus or are you just a console boy forever through and through i i, I think the ultimate answer is no i will say before series x came out um, when, when I was thinking about these SSD hard drives and I bought my first laptop with a solid state and I just, I was amazed at how quick everything was. And I started thinking, man, gaming on this would be phenomenal. And this, you know, this was what, six, seven years ago when solid states were really first started coming out and, 
and um, and and I finally made the purchase what three and a half four years ago, and so that at that that instant when solid state really started becoming mainstream, I, I think I was very interested. Um, the moment Series X came out, I, I was happy. I mean, five hundred bucks. I mean, and you guys, and, and we've talked about this just in our text chat to try to make a, a, a laptop, especially right now. So let's not talk about right now because of prices. But but go, go back, you know, right when Series X came out, and try building a laptop for that. You just can't do it. Uh, or a gaming PC, you just can't do it. And so the problem is, is that every year, every two years, you're going to want to buy the next thing, right? Whereas Xbox, I can wait for the mid-gen upgrade, and I know I'm not going to spend another dime on hardware until until that comes. Maybe now, you know, maybe you know, there's talk about maybe getting that external uh, SSD. But yeah, so so for me, it's a financial decision. It's not about that, you know, PC. It's just it's just financially not a sound move for me because you know my resources in the gaming industry are going to be limited obviously like you fellas i am very blessed to to go out and buy a series x but it it took a lot of planning it took a lot of me putting it together i mean i basically for a year was prepping for that purchase and so for me to do the same thing every single year on a laptop and then one year later you're like oh my laptop's no longer the best laptop out there i got to have the next best thing like I, i'm 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 i mean i'm i'm totally uh, prone to falling under that temptation. So, so for those reasons, I'm not, um, I will say though, and this is just a total side note, but when I, when I found out that, uh, Halo was going to be cross, uh, cross platform, I, I, I was kind of bummed because I suck at Halo already. And now you put a bunch of PC gamers in there and I just, I do not have a shot in the world of being any good at that game. <laughs> uh, not true. Good news, Bogus. You can choose lobbies to where it's controller only, mouse and keyboard only or a mix so you oh, will have the option awesome. and to be honest it really won't matter either way because they're freaks on controllers i know so i know they're all oh, i know it, yeah yeah <laughs> i mean i can't i've only played maybe less than 10 hours of halo and i oh. and i just okay. and Boom, it's nothing bogus. like Get other, them so yeah all right muting bogus moving on uh chipotle bear you're a techie guy and <laughs> You you are the biggest techie Apple simp I know. Everyone, p- big announcement. Chipotle Bear, why don't we just cover this now? Tell us about your big purchase, and will you be playing any video games on this uh, purchase that you got? Because I don't think Bogus oh, I will make this very short. I did buy a new MacBook <laughs> Pro. There was a big Apple uh, event last week. I have been waiting for that event for six years, and uh, I'm very excited for my purchase. And uh, you know that's all I'll say about that. I'm very excited. I am a big <laughs> Apple simp. You didn't wrong. buy a MacBook Pro. You bought yeah. the Mac. He bought. No, I didn't right? buy the. Did Macs. you buy the? I Macs. didn't buy the Mac. Okay. Regardless, I just have to point this out. What Chipotle Bear paid, he could have bought a seventy-seven inch OLED. I'm just gonna throw that out there. You're right. I'm just and I, and I seriously there. thought about it. But he, he, if you really want to know the reason I was able to justify it, is one, I've been saving money a lot. Like Bogus said, like it's it's been a calculated purchase. It wasn't like just a whim. Like oh, there's my credit card. It was calculated and. When I really think about like a lot of the side hustles I do, graphic design and, and video making and stuff like that, a lot of that comes from my computer. And so easily justifiable that spending. Anyway, back to your question about the computer. I've never really considered getting into PC gaming for a couple of reasons. Um, the one, th- the couple of reasons why I really would want to is actually is the building process. I've always been fascinated by people that build like towers and stuff like that. I really like the creative, artistic, expressional aspects of that. Um, like it's like a Lego. It's kind of like well, if you like Legos, you probably like building computers. Obviously, they're a little different, but same principles. Um, but I, the problem is, I would what would I do with it? Because I, I like Dan's right. I'm a big Apple guy. Like I like Mac OS. Like that's where I like to work and, and live and play. Um, and I know I could play games on the PC, but that seems like an incredible waste to have a PC that's amazing just to play games. Um, I also thought if I was like going to get into streaming, I would consider it because of the same reasons. But like realistically, no one wants to watch me come in 18th place <laughs> on Halo and stuff like that. Uh, so it'd be more just for the hobby of it itself and appreciation of the culture. But even that being said, I do appreciate it. I do love watching those kind of videos, even though I'm not in the market for a graphics card. It's been interesting and fascinating to watch that whole piece over the last really two years with COVID and stuff like that. So no, not looking to get into PC, but again, as we've always said, the more people that get into gaming whatever their venue is totally cool. Um, the other last thing I would just quickly mention is our school now has an esports team. We're actually ranked seventh in state in uh, smash brothers, which is pretty rad. And, um, it's, it's, it's gotten me a lot more into the culture and I kind of want to play a couple of games. Like the one big one is like league of legends, which I can actually get for my Mac, but I'm God awful in it. Uh, so we'll see. But no, right now I'm not going to buy anything. Uh, Chipotle Bear, any interest in PC gaming? Or sorry, not Chipotle, Bubble Boy, sorry. 
you know, from in an expense cost, right? It, it would it would be really hard to justify because what, let me just say this: What if money was not an issue? Because my biggest barrier, I'll say it right now, was not being able to play with you guys, with my friends. Now I can do that. Crossplay is real, especially within the Xbox ecosystem. It's very easy, and uh, there I feel like it's. I, I've done it before. I just, I've played with you guys. It, but it, in it, we are in a world where money's an issue, and I just I know myself, and I would be like I said. The reason I got that and Ashley okayed the OLED was because I haven't even looked at a new TV again in two years, right? And I haven't needed to with that PC um, community. I would be constantly let me update this, let me update that, let me get the best new this, let me get the best new that, and it would be never ending. And I probably would have to get. A divorce and that would okay. not probably be worth it but what if money wasn't <laughs> an issue i just i still would you do it there's kind of part of part of me too then though that's like it would this is gonna sound nuts but like it'd be exhausting to keep up with right like i like that there's the the five-year cycle or so for the 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 consoles that we have and that I'm not constantly worried about pre-ordering this and pre-ordering that. And am I going to get it? And is it going to come on time? And now there's a chip shortage and now there's this. And like, it's just, I tried to get a refrigerator the other day, right? And they were sold out before it even, like, I think at nine o'clock and one second, they were all sold out. Like, I feel like I could not, I'd have a heart attack before I'd have the right rig going because it, it just constantly buying new things or hoping to buy new things. Okay. So I guess I would be the only one switching to PC if money was not an issue. Well, I guess I see, I think you're a little interested though, because then you could have more access to PlayStation games. Bogus money wasn't an issue. Would yeah. you consider it? I mean, absolutely. And, and it, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be either or, right? If money's not yeah. an issue, you grab a PC, <laughs> you grab a PS5, and then you just, you know. The cool thing is, and if I did switch to gaming on a on a computer, it would definitely be a laptop because to me that's one of the big, you know, things. And I know those gaming laptops are a lot bigger than, like, my, my personal laptop I have, but they're still easier to move than, you know, like D. Wally sneaks his Xbox Series S with him, you know, when he goes. And for me, I just take my little, you know, my little handheld controller, and now I can stream on the on the phone, so. But yeah, I think the, the the mix of the ecosystem is the big the big key, and I, I think you raise a good point, D Wally, that now that you can be on the computer and you can still game with people in the Xbox ecosystem, that's a huge boon, I think, to maybe people making the switch. If if really money and and there, hey, let's be honest, there's a, there's many people in this you know in the gaming world, and and they have that you know ability to make that switch, yeah. and, and the finances aren't even a thought you know in that decision. True. So. Well, I just want to shout out to 343 and Xbox and Microsoft for really focusing on PC because PC is growing. And like the more I think about it, like all the big streamers, like that, they're not playing on console. They're playing these games. They might play with a controller, but they're playing on PC. They're doing everything on PC. And Cam Capcom just recently said that they're going to focus PC first primarily as their primary uh, development from now on. So they're not even – that's they're going to build for PC, then scale down to, to consoles. So – PC gaming is is growing. It is huge. And Bogus, just so you know, I was playing on my laptop. It had to be plugged in, of course, but there are plenty of plugs anywhere, everywhere. I was at the Philadelphia International Airport, and I was playing Destiny on my laptop, and it was awesome. And let me tell you, it was sweet. And I've played Psychonauts on it, too. And it's pretty awesome being able to play on your laptop. It's the same laptop that's that's down there doing this show. So laptop gaming is pretty cool. And But... If we do go on vacations, there's nothing like having just the little Series S, my little companion with me on. on I literally trips, don't know so. how you get that everywhere without Ali getting mad at you. Like, it's not like it's a Game Boy that you like hid in a jacket sleeve on like the bottom of your suitcase. It's a big ass box. <laughs> I don't tell her. I don't tell her. Well, That's how I get away with it. She, I don't tell she her made him pay there. for it. Yeah, no, he, he <laughs> paid for it last weekend, right? Like, yeah, exactly. With the guy's trip, that, the girl's the, trip. The, he got to bring it for one trip and she's like, well, the next 10 years of your life are going to suck, sir. So <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the final story this week, celebrating back to back Xbox game studio releases. This is coming from the Xbox wire. 
August 25th, we got Psychonauts 2. October 28th, next week, we get Age of Empires 4 on PC. Speaking of PC, November 9th, we get Forza Horizon 5. November 18th, Flight Simulator Game of the Year Edition. And then December 8th, the big one, Halo Infinite. And then late in the year, we get Minecraft Caves and Cliffs. Celebrating 20 years of Xbox. This is coming for, from Mike Booty. Uh, basically he, he just talked about all those things that are coming. Um, and, and we, he says, we want to invite, and we invite you to join us on November 15th to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Xbox and Halo with a fun digital broadcast for our fans around the globe. While we won't announce any new games, this anniversary broadcast will be a special look back at 20 years of Xbox. We'll share more details soon. So stay tuned. So, gentlemen, I can't believe it. Uh, this goes into my the next segment, which is going to be the good old days. I just wanted to talk about and celebrate, I can't believe it, 20 years of Xbox history. And all of us can't, came from you know other systems, mainly PlayStation. But now we primarily game on Xbox. I just wanted to kind of go through some of our most fond Xbox memories throughout maybe every generation and close out the show with the good old days celebrating the 20th anniversary of Xbox. And I want to start out with Jay biz because Jay biz, I told him to do some homework. We already talked about our top five Xbox games, so we don't need to cover that again. But Bogus, I want to hear your original Xbox, especially since you didn't own an OG Xbox. Tell us your top five Xbox quickly that you have all time OG Shout out to the Duke. Yeah, yeah. So uh, original Xbox games, um, there was there were some good ones, and and I will admit that some of these games that I I, I played on PlayStation Two. So, um, th- but some of them I did play. So Grand Theft Auto Three, I throw in there at, at spot number five. Um, and 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 a lot of people probably be San Andreas is better. I think San Andreas probably is a better game. I just never played it. I missed it. So I played three, and then at that time was kind of you know kind of stepped away from it. So I never actually got into the uh, San Andreas. But but wait, that wait, was wait, my so bogus. GTA three was that ever on Xbox? Yeah. Yeah, GTA 3 was on Xbox. I'm going to look that uh, up. It came, yeah, you can look it up. Uh, it definitely was on Xbox because um, because I looked these up earlier just to be sure and and, and it did show up. So, uh, so GTA 3 was my was was my first Grand Theft Auto experience. So, I'm throwing that in there at number 5. Um, number 4, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. Um, that, that game was incredible. I mean, soundtracks were cool and just all that. I just never, I, you felt so cool doing all of the tricks that you can do and all the things I could never do in real life. Cause I did skateboard a little bit in middle school and just, and being able to just do it with, you know, a joystick and it was, it was incredible. So that's number four. And those combos. Um, Don't forget those combos. Yeah. Yeah. Those combos were just, it was, so, that game was so much fun. I, I soaked hours and hours into that game with my roommates and uh it, we just take turns you know you'd you would play games like pig and horse where you know like you would with basketball but you'd sit there and pull a trick and then hand the controller off and makes i mean we just yeah tons and tons of fun so uh yeah tony hawk pro skater three coming in at number four number three a game that i think um was a little bit ahead of its time some people just call it a cop off of grand theft auto but mercenaries uh playground of destruction I don't think that game got a ton of great, you know, great. Uh, it was it wasn't a huge game, but that was my first um, real um, entry into into a, like a sandbox game, and 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 I had just come off a of kind of Grand Theft Auto three, but I loved that game even a little bit more because it was in a war zone, and and so I don't know if you guys played that game, but you're basically in North Korea and 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 you're basically a mercenary and you have to go through, and the coolest thing about that game is you can complete that game in any order you wanted. And so it truly was just, are you, are you, you know, leveled up enough to, to attack this zone, but you can go right after the, the, the hardest guy, you know, the main, the main boss right at the beginning. And so that was my first experience of where I could go wherever I want and do whatever I wanted to do and complete the story in any, and kind of any, any way I wanted. So, so that's number three, which probably isn't going to be on a lot of people's top five, but I just, I loved that game. And just that sandbox experience was so cool. Um, number two was my first, the original get good game I ever played. And that's Ninja Gaiden Black. 
um, which is just an incredibly difficult game. Um, and I had played like Ninja Gaiden back in NES days and could never beat that game. I mean, that game was just so hard. So when I, I, I actually did beat Ninja uh, Gaiden Black and uh, that's kind of one of my, you know, and then Ninja Gaiden 2 off the back of that, I ended up beating that game too. So those are like two of the games where I just put hours and hours into and finally, you know, just through sheer perseverance, not because I'm any good at video games, was able to kind of get through those games. So that's number two. Number one is probably number one on a lot of people's list, and this is an uh, Xbox ex exclusive, and that's Fable. Fable is my number one probably original Xbox game um, because... Man, it just as an RPG, action RPG, that game was just incredible. The, the that was the first time I ever played a game where you could customize your character in the ways that you could. You can even customize whether you want, you know, your play style and whether you wanted to use magic or some of those other things. Uh, the rolling mechanic was that was the real first time that I had, had kind of played a game where the rolling mechanic kind of came into um, play, you know, and and I just absolutely love the story. It was just an incredible story and so original. Um, and then a couple of my and, and 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 let me just also say that I was not an FPS person, so I'm missing a ton of great games that would be in everybody else's top. Uh, five. Halo, yes, yeah, exactly. And and so I'm probably you know gonna be looked down upon because I didn't even mention Halo. I just never played first person shooters until I met you guys, and 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 even then, D Wall, if you remember, I, I I wanted nothing to do with online gaming until Mass Effect Three came out. When Mass Effect Three came out, I, that's when I really got it into it and loved and you and I sunk tons of hours into that game and then after that you you kind of mowed me along into into the first person shooter so then I then I started getting into Battlefield and some of these other ones so so that's the reason that there's not a single FPS game there's so many great ones on Xbox I just never experienced those games so I feel like you know I would just be putting those in there because I know they belong in in the top five of all time so hopefully that doesn't upset too many people and the only other thing I'll say really quickly is quickly on honorable mentions obviously could um Knights of the Old Republic has to be on there as an honorable mention, but I didn't play that till many, many years later. So I, I felt like it what probably what didn't deserve a spot in my top five. Um, Prince of Persia: Sands of Time was probably one of the best platformers of that generation, and so that definitely, definitely deserves. Um, you know, a, a, a nod. And then Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow was the first Splinter Cell game I ever played. And it was brutally difficult for me, but I, but I really enjoyed it. So that one, and then the last one, uh, is it's just an incredible game, but another game I didn't play until many years later, Jade Empire. That might be the best Bioware uh, game that was made on the Xbox, and 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 I I I I think people might disagree, but that game is so underrated. What an incredible game, and probably even deserves a spot in my top five. But but I but I just didn't put it in there because I didn't play it till till you know years and years later. So well, so there's my list. Take it or leave thank, it. Thank you for that list, Bob. Because I've heard good things about Jade Empire, and that's one that I never played either. Um, and Bogus, you were right. I didn't know this. The Grand Theft Auto 3 was released for Xbox in October of 2003. The first, it originally launched in October of 2001 for PS2, and that's what I associated for it. And that's what, that's what made me really get a PS2 was basically to play GTA 3 on it. So, um, but, but boy, I, why don't you tell me what's one of your most fond in general, just it can be recent, just throughout the years of xbox that you maybe haven't shared because i remember the dorm one what's one i haven't heard well and you, I, yeah because the the and i'll just preface with of course the land land parties right were were probably the the peak of just awesomeness at the time Me too yeah. um one that we probably haven't talked about but we've dropped a couple of references to was um bad company and the time that we spent on playing Bad Company because that was you're stealing mine, damn you! What? Oh, sorry. I mean, I liked the time. Uh, no, one that that uh, I will give you a different one. I won't elaborate on Bad Company. Um, there, when the Xbox One came out, D Wally and I uh, worked together at Gateway that year, and we 
took off probably what two hours early or so and we went over yep. to park meadows mall and we waited in line um and i can and it was the nerdiest was thing great... ever but i'll never i can picture it in my brain still right now the first dude walking out with it out of the microsoft store and holding <laughs> it up over his head and just everybody cheering right and i was like this is the nerdiest, coolest thing ever, though, right? Like, it's just it was everybody's cool. happy, Dude. everybody's celebrating. Like, we're all excited to go run home and, and get this going. And we, we were both s- took off the next day at work. And, like, yep. uh, we were so excited for the launch of the Xbox One, even after all the backlash, mm-hmm. too. And so, and everyone else there. I'll never forget, <clears> Chance. I was number 23. I still remember on my badge, I was the 23rd yep. person in line. It was really cool. So, we started in line, and they were nice and us to give us badges like right away be like, okay, you can leave and come back and we'll just let you in. So I was 23 chance was probably ahead of me. I think, and I think was it? No, Eva we were there. Together, Shout out to Eva. Eva was Did there we... too. Uh, Did she get an Xbox? Uh, I don't think so. I think she I was just hanging out yeah, with us. Yeah. No, it, she's like, I'm not hanging out with you. She stopped by. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. And then she left. She's like, I'm not hanging out with these nerds all night. Mm-hmm. Dude, do you remember how much we dropped that first night on all of it? Cause I got Forza battlefield I I, I got Dead oh, and, Rising, and, I got Rise, and I I think there might have been a third dude. That's like, and I might have gotten like an extent, easily probably dropped like a thousand, yeah, right? Yeah. Or close to like eight hundred dollars easily that night because it was five hundred bucks at launch. What else? Oh with oh yeah, of course connect. Forza. I would have gotten Forza, Dead Rising, and Rise. Yeah, and that Connect baby setting it up, and I just. <laughs> That, that's the other memory. Because Remember how that excited and, we were and, for the future? Yep. And to every Skype. Time, like Skype, Skype each other. Yeah. Every time I would be playing, Ashley's like, can they see me? Can I, like, can they see me? And it's like, she doesn't yeah. have to ask that oh. anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Good, good memory. I would have brought that up. Thank you. You still have it too. Chipotle Bear, why don't you share a, a fond Xbox memory throughout the uh, 20 years of Xbox for us? Uh, you know, I think. The, I have two, one quick one from the very first from the OG Xbox. Um, I remember when they first announced it and everybody made fun of it because Microsoft was so far behind, even Nintendo at that time. Um, but I remember they were trying to, it was really trying to make like a computer hybrid gaming system because like I remember one of the features that they touted was that you could rip your own music onto the Xbox and then you could pull up those playlists mid game, which very few people probably ever used. I think I tried it a couple of times. I uh, did. There's only so many times you could listen to the Creed album while you're playing video games. Um, but uh, I thought that was really cool. And I remember my mom, when she got me the Xbox, I'll never forget, she was like, it's going it's to be the next best thing. And I, at the time, I was like, almost like, mom, I said I wanted a PlayStation 2. <laughs> you know? Uh, but, you know, it's funny how you, you think back how much that changed my life, the course of my life. Um, the other one along the, the same lines of the Xbox One, though, um, I, I, we told the story very briefly. But to elaborate on it, um, when I was getting married, I got married in the year 2013. Um, it was right at the time that it was um, – it was like this was this transition was happening to the Xbox one from the 360. And I honestly, uh, audio listeners, wait, wait, audio listeners, check it out right now. A picture of Jose at his house, his house in Denver. When we gave him the actual, look at that handsome yep. young fellow. Go ahead. So I was me. getting married uh, to my beautiful wife, but our wedding was awesome, but very expensive. And so like every penny mattered. And so I honestly was not going to buy that Xbox. I was going to wait a couple of years or maybe the mid cycle refresh. And uh, sure enough, my groomsmen, which included in, at that time, bubble boy and D Wally um, bought it for me. And I'll never forget like just the overwhelming, like, I, I, I don't think I cried. Maybe I cried, but just overwhelming sense of like, man, my friends like truly understand me and they care about me. And not that I wouldn't have loved dish towels or, you know, a tool or something, but man, they really knew that Xbox was super rad. So that was really cool. And then on that game, the, one of the first games I really played and I, I must've sunk almost 200 hours was black flag. I really liked black flag and I know it's at the top of a lot of AC's lists. Um, but it was just so good, man. And so many components. And I, I really like legitimately wanted to scour every inch of that map. And then you find out about the like white whale and I wanted to do that. And like, I love the battles. Like it just, that was a great memory of that generation for me was playing. Um, and of course you know, I know you're going to talk about bad company, Dan, but just, that was always there too. But yeah, I love Black Flag as well. And uh, of course, thanks to my wonderful groomsmen for for that system. Yeah, those those are the good old days right here, guys. Look at this. This is back in 2013. There's a picture of my Xbox right when Chance and I picked it up. I got my look at the Civic SI, a little manual shifter right there. I got Battlefield 4 and Forza, what was that? 
sports and motors. Five. That was five already. Oh my gosh. So thank you for sharing that Jose. Um, so here are my quick, I think the thing that Xbox that stands out to me the most is just all of the friends that I've made through Xbox and not only made or, uh, connected with, but just kept us together. I feel like Xbox is the one thing that is as sad to say, like, as we get older, but it, it's what keeps us together. And it's a very awesome social aspect. Like, obviously we do this podcast too, but that's not the same as gaming with your boys. And I'm very, very thankful for the opportunity to be able to play with my friends. Cause I feel like as you get older with kids and responsibilities and everything, like you just don't have much free time to do something you want to do. And then to be able to do it with other people and not take away time with your family. Like we all are fortunate to have a little bit of time at night. Thank you to Bogus for staying up late tonight to do this. Like, so I just want to shout out to Xbox. Like the, it's the big social element for me in my life and, and with all my friends. So all my memories really stand out to me are playing Halo, like Chance said, land parties in high school, the, the uh, Halo 2 launch in college, um, getting my 360 in college and playing nonstop Halo 3 in Call of Duty, meeting Miggy in, at CU. Shout out to Miggy. I got uh, to meet Miggy in so Vegas. Much. That was the first time I met him at my bachelor party. <laughs> And you know, exactly, like, I it's remember good. that. Yeah, meeting Miggy, like this online entity, and then having him meet you guys in, in real life. Yeah, I met him and that British CU. dude. We worked Who together. was that British dude? Yes, I'm gonna get to that. Okay. I'm gonna get to that. So, <laughs> so meeting Miggy, well, we 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 worked together, but I we, we played so much Call of Duty 4. Miggy, shout out to Miggy, he was like ranked like top oh, like beast 25 mode. or something in Call of Duty 4, and then in, in Battlefield, even higher, like he's insane. And then moving into like the young adulthood, like getting reconnected with chance and Jose meeting Bogus uh, at bear Creek, getting him into Xbox. I'm pretty sure into, in the mass of mass. Effect. Did I introduce you to mass effect? J biz. Oh, okay. Well we had that in common, but yeah, we, had, um, we, we had in common, but you did get me in, into online gaming. I mean, I would not have yes. gotten into multiplayer without you. So to be fair though, Bogus still isn't big in multiplayer and he still isn't big into first person shooters. He just likes to game on his own, like bubble boy. Um, but continuing on to that. So yeah, one of the most fond 360 memories I had, and this is a wild story, is me and my brother were playing Battlefield Bad Company. We were on a map. We were destroying the team on Rush. And all of a sudden, it's just me and my brother and one guy left. This one guy wouldn't leave. And we were just trolling him, killing him. And then it got to the point where like we we're just walking up to each other and like, you know, teabagging each other and laughing and doing funny things. And then all of a sudden, I don't know how, but oh yeah, he invites us to his party. And so me and my brother were like, oh, okay. We joined him. And he's like, oh, you guys are killing me. And, you know, with this funny accent, with this Prosby accent, we we find out that this guy lives in Italy. He's a young guy, just play gaming, loves Battlefield as much as us. We start talking, really get to know each other, start playing online with him every night in Bad Company. And then we establish this friendship online. And maybe like a few months later, he's like, hey, I want to visit Colorado. I'm a huge fan of South Park and Casa Bonita and all this stuff. He's like, can I come hang out with you guys? And we're like, uh, sure, we'll pick you up for the airport. So sure enough, this guy, Alex, shout out to Alex, shout out to Prosby, flies from Italy. We pick him up. We'd never met this guy. Didn't know who he was. Barely, you know, saw him on Facebook. He comes to Colorado. I remember we took him to the airport. He passes out because he had such bad jet lag. He brought his Xbox, which was cool too, because we could still game together at the hotel. We show him around Denver. We took him to Mile High. We did the Mile High uh, or whatever it was. What I don't even know what it's called. Empower Field at Mile High now. We took him to a Rockies game. Took him up to see you Boulder. Took him to South Park. Whatever. The, what what is what's the real town? I don't even know what it is. South but Park. we took him to. No, it's 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 after uh, is it Granby? I can, no, it's like outside of the, Bailey, right? It's some it's some town, yeah, up in north of Buena, like in the valley over there by Buena Vista. It might be somewhere over there. Anyway, we took them to, and sure enough, there's. Have you guys? I guess I mean, you haven't been there. There's like a sign saying, "Oh, South Park, Colorado," but um, no, took up two eighty five. It's it's yeah, it's literally up down yeah, the exactly. street from Bear Creek. If you want to take it, well, uh, down a long street. Yes, <laughs> you're right. It took two eighty five for a long ways, and you'll get to South Park or South Park, Colorado. Took him to Casa Bonita, and that just shows like how we 
form this incredible friendship with a guy that we would have never ever met in our lives thanks to thanks to xbox and the online community so uh shout out to xbox in 20 years and i hope we get to experience 20 more and many more after that it, it's crazy to think about i'm glad uh that we're doing this xbox podcast you guys i wish we would have started it earlier we probably could <laughs> Probably, probably could have had a bigger audience if we would have been one of the first to jump on this. Especially, cause I remember teaching podcasts back, guys, when I was at oh that horrible alternative high school that I used to be at with my my first year teaching. Elizabeth, man, I should have jumped in then in Elizabeth, yeah, but Frontier High School. And I remember the kids were like, "What? What's a podcast? What?" I'm like, "Oh, you just record yourself talking. I don't know what it is. Just do this assignment." And so, <laughs> I uh, I wish we would have gotten this early, but. Shout out to Xbox. Those are some of my favorite memories. And here I'm wearing my 20-year shirt in just in celebration. Do, do you guys have any other fond Xbox memories that you'd like to share that maybe I triggered there? Or, or do we want to close out like we always do? Just the last thing I want to mention that I, I've really come to appreciate doing this podcast more. And, of course, gaming is like – I don't know how you guys feel, but as I got – into my adult life, it was never a shame is not the right word. I've never been ashamed of gaming or being nerdy. Like I've owned it as a badge of pride, but it did for a while feel like it was getting less and less acceptable from just like the public. And you know, like when you, when you're dating, trying to like find a wife generally, like you don't bring that up. Like the first date, you like, you don't want to know what my gamer score is like that. You know, we joke about that, but that it was kind of like taking the back seat. And so, um, I really have appreciated what gaming has done because I, I love gaming. I've loved it since I was a little kid and, and it just feels, it's really nice to see that in this modern world, it's evolved to the point where like it, it's success, successful, very wealthy, cool people game. And we, I mean, we were always cool to be fair, but um, <laughs> you know, it's just, I love that it's much more acceptable. And, and even as a one quick note, a, a pride point for me at school is it's a really nice way to connect with kids um, and, and even literally, literally this morning, I was dealing, unfortunately, with the situation with the kid that was not great. And um, a student was not being very talkative. And I, and one thing I, he, he, I mentioned something about gaming. I don't know how it came up. And I was like, he, he mentioned Battlefield. That's what it was. And I was like, oh, 2042, did you play the beta? And he like, he like, f you could see it in his face. It was like, oh my God, he knows. And we got, we literally spent like 20 minutes talking about gaming and what he loves to do. And by the end of it, he was like totally open. And the other, the other adults in the room were like, I feel like you're speaking a good foreign language that I know nothing about, but it, it just, it's a really, truly a great unifier and, and something that we're all really grateful for today. So I'm, I'm grateful for everything that we've had with Xbox and with all systems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a really good thing. Like gaming is for everybody. I'm so glad you said that. It really is. And let me hold on, Bogus. Let me just really quickly say, like, Jose, you're right, though. I, I understand what you're saying about that shame. Like, it's not shame. Like, I've always loved gaming. It's always been a part of my life. But I feel like even a little bit with, with Allie, you know, or girls I've dated for, they just don't get it, right? It's because it's not, it's because we're passionate about it. Like, we, that's just been our lives forever. And it's, it's hard to explain, but like, not everyone has to get it, though. You know, like, that's how I've always kind of felt. But at the same time, I do feel you're right. Gaming today is at a much different spot than it was when we were in high school or when we were in college or even like the last generation. Like it is mainstream now. Like it is a huge part of like everybody. Like there's so many, like I hate to say this, but there weren't many, very many that I at least knew of like girl gamers. You know what I mean? And I know that sounds bad, but like, like that's not the case anymore. Like you said, like, Oh, you didn't want to tell a girl there are girls now, if we were dating, if we were younger, you know, like, Oh yeah, I love like, can you imagine if you met a girl was like, yeah, my gamer tags this, I've got 500 K gamer score. Like that's, we only dreamed of like those situations, but that's happening now, you know? And so I, I think I'm, I'm glad. And I, I'm just happy that we're finally at that space, but it's, it's sad not like thinking about it right now, like it took a long time to get here and it's still, we're still not like completely there yet. People are not, like you said, you were talking to that student, like to me and you and to this kid, like, yeah, this is normal talk for us. But like all the people are like, what is he talking about? He sounds like a, I don't know. You, you know what I mean? And, right? and you know, it's crazy. You mentioned it. I know Bogus, you want to see this with him too. You said 20 years from now. Can you, can you realize in 20 years we could have all of our kids on here? speaking about oh, this God. Isn't that crazy like that's just crazy oh. to think and they'd be like they wouldn't be this age that we're at now but close that's insane yeah, man. they're probably gonna hate gaming <laughs> no they won't my, my, my daughters love well, it already that's, that's and that's what i can't wait for is when my daughter's to be able old to game enough because obviously i crush her right now but like when she can 
play just barely. legitimately. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> and still crush her, right? Like, get some of those perfect shots. I'm sorry, babe, you know? And it, by that time, we'll, like, be doing it just with our brains and our eyes and stuff. But um, <laughs> I, I really, really can't wait for that, so... That'll be a proud dad moment. The first time they beat you in a game, you'd be like, I'm not yeah. even mad. Just give me a hug. Yeah, we'll just let them because my kid's never going to beat me. Go ahead, Bogus. We love gaming. We just love gaming here. Yeah, this is a great yeah. segment, by the way. Well, and, and, and you guys, you, you took both of mine because the two I was going to mention was, was um, you know, being in education. It's just there's not a quicker way to connect with, with your students. Um, not that all of them game, but, but most of them can relate. And, 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 and so, you know, I, I was talking to one of my kids the other day, um, and, and they asked me, they said, well, are you an Xbox guy or a PC, you know, PlayStation guy? I mean, that was the first question. So, so we talked about it, you know, and talked about which one was better. And, and, uh, it was, you know, this was a kid who I barely knew. It wasn't one of my own students, but, but, um, kind of the same thing, passed him in the hall, got into a little bit of trouble and then, that, then started talking to him, right? and boom gaming so and then the other thing i was going to say because i am lucky enough you know to have a kid just a little bit older than you guys uh your guys' kiddos but but my nine-year-old riley she's she's really gotten into gaming and she loves it and so we play fortnite together and i suck at fortnite but i still can beat her so she always gets mad when we play the you know the one the one v one and uh, she plays it all the time and i'm i'm she's getting it's getting close like i can see that the, the rain is ending the rain's gonna end here probably and unless i decide to get in there and put some hours into it um she is definitely gonna, gonna be able to beat and then that's when you just year. bust out some old mario kart that's and right. like, i will <laughs> that's always right. be your that's daddy right. Yeah. that's <laughs> right that's right <laughs> um so yeah so those are the big two man it's just incredible as a parent and as an educator being able to connect with kids is, is just really really cool and, and you and you're getting do something you love right you're not having to go do something that you you feel like you kind of just have to do because it's your kid you get to do something you enjoy and i don't love fortnite but the fact that i get to play video games with my daughter i mean that's that just that's awesome and she's in the other room and i'm in the room and we're sitting there talking to each other you know on the chat <laughs> it's just hilarious you know it's yeah. great so well great segment you guys probably what why don't you close it off final final thoughts here i was Shout just gonna say is uh, is riley our number two fan of xbox or xrt <laughs> count that out of the list yeah yeah i've gotten i've got i've gotten her to listen to just a little bit but most of the time when i listened one day actually she drove with me to work at the beginning of the year and uh so she was listening to it and 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 she heard she heard something mentioned i can't remember off the top of my head and she said daddy what are they are they talking about i say yeah they're talking about it. so she started listening you know and so so she has listened and she she uh she is a fan of the show nice so thank you guys for that awesome segment let's End the show like we always do. Bogus's favorite segment with the best food we had this week. Uh, let's go straight to Bogus. Bogus, quickly, what was the best food you had this week? So I, I do just want to really quickly mention that I, I did call it Diwali and begged you to go get one of those Popeye's chicken sandwiches for, for a long time. And you said nothing was going to be, you know, Chick-fil-A. I, I remember that comment. You said nothing's going to be Chick-fil-A. I said, you got to try it and then you can decide. And so, you know, I, I, I like I like I like that I get to now say on air that I, that I told you so. Uh, but but anyway, it was my birthday last Friday. I turned the big four zero. And, um, and straight and to so, Popeye's the straight. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my wife bought me tickets to, um, to, a, to a Switchfoot concert, which is one of my favorite bands. Not, not super popular, but, but I think most people would, would maybe recognize one or two songs. But, um, so on the way down there, we went to downtown and I live in North Carolina, just outside of Raleigh. So we went downtown to Raleigh and, um, ate at a restaurant down there called Humble Pie. And, and it, it was incredible. It was one of those things where you got to, it's kind of like tapas. It's not tapas, but you got to order everything kind of family style, a la carte. So I ordered a, a honey sesame fried chicken. And I will tell you guys that if you like fried chicken, you just, you get the best fried chicken in the South. That's just, that's, 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 you know. That's just the way it is. And I didn't realize that until I moved out here, but, um, it was spicy. It was dark thigh. So I like dark meat and it was dark. It was dark boneless, uh, meat cuts, um, perfect crispiness. I mean, and just, and, and, and it had the, the sesame seeds spicy. And then, um, I am, and so this might make you, you know, you might not like this very much, but, but Brussels sprouts. Uh, I am not a Brussels sprout guy, but we, we, my wife ordered these Brussels sprouts that were roasted. 
I mean, it was like the best vegetable I've had in over a year. I, I, I just can't remember it. And honestly, I can't remember ever having a, a, a vegetable that tasted that good. And I am not a Brussels sprout guy, but man, they were incredible. And, um, and then my wife got a, got a burger and it just, it, it just was an amazing, amazing cheeseburger. So anyway, we went there and ate and, and shout out to humble pie. Uh, if you're ever downtown Raleigh, um, we went there and then went to the, the red hat amphitheater, which is not, doesn't have anything on red rocks. And, and I miss red rocks very, very much, but a very, very cool, um, venue downtown Raleigh. And you kind of, it's, it's cool because you can see the tall buildings all around you and you're still in a concert kind of setting. So, so it was a great night and uh, humble pie was amazing. And, and, and like Diwali probably once or twice, you know, a month, I try to try to find my ways out, out to a Popeye's to get me a chicken, <laughs> spicy chicken sandwich. So yeah, of course so that was it. I'll, I'll go next very quickly. Uh, speaking of Popeye's, I did have Popeye's again, you guys. So I got it twice this week on the way home. I am addicted. It's a problem. It's like 4.32 just for the sandwich. So I'm like, I, how can I say no to did this? Did you try That's that Black and Ranch that I told you about? Try their Black and Ranch. No, with the fries. I didn't it's do really that. Good, Dang dude. it. The fries were not very good, by the way. I'm still upset about that, Lana. Um, and then the other thing I want to give a shout out for for best food was – if you go to King Supers, I recommend the Cajun roll and the jalapeno roll. They're little cheap little sushi that they have. Get it. It's consistently good. Love it. Bubble Boy, what was the best food that you had this week? Uh, in, in oldie but a goodie, we had Chipotle yesterday. Ashley said she called me at about, I don't know, 2.30 or 3. And she's like, you have got to figure out dinner on your own. And all I heard her say was Chipotle, Chipotle, Chipotle. And it was great. Always a classic. Never bad. What do you get? Yeah, you got to tell us your standard burrito. All right, so the barbacoa. Um, I did try the brisket that they have um, on, I don't know, was it Saturday or Friday of last week? Yeah, how, what was that? Um, Thoughts on that? I, it, it's good. It's not what I want at Chipotle, though. I mean, I'd, it had been fantastic in, in probably anything else, but it just, I, when I go to Chipotle, I want barbacoa. Um, the barbacoa is my standard. Um, I used to get bowls a lot and then realize like, you know what? I I'm here. I'm spending money. Life's too short. Exactly. I need to get what I'm going to get. And so it's standard burrito from here on out. Um, white rice, black beans, corn salsa. I, sometimes I put the green salsa on there or the red just kind of depends on how I'm feeling. Um, ever since I've been able to go back in and eat there, I don't do any salsa other than the corn. Cause I always do the green Tabasco, um, sour cream, cheese, and lettuce, and then always either chips and guac or, um, queso and chips. Very good. I just want to quickly add on it. I also had Chipotle and Jose, I got the queso in my burrito this time. Not as good. I'm not going to do that again. But when Allie mistakenly got me a bowl for whatever reason, I literally have never ordered a bowl in my life. I won't let that be known right now. For some reason, she got it for me. Double meat, which is what I get. Remember, can I have some chicken? Actually, I'll have double chicken. And, <laughs> and then corn salsa, green salsa. That's the combo chance. That's the greatest combo right there. Lettuce, cheese, queso. In the bowl form, was fantastic. So if I'm going to get queso, it's either on the side or it's going to be in the bowl. Pro tip for all you guys out there. Chipotle Bear, close it off. What was the best food you had this week? Uh, so this one is a shout out to my wife. Uh, so she had a friend in town last weekend. And uh, as part of that, we make usually like really good breakfast. That's like a staple of my family. You can ask Chance about it. Um, and my wife uh, made homemade cinnamon rolls. She made three trays of them uh, with like cream cheese frosting that she made from scratch. And, uh, and they were freaking phenomenal. <laughs> we like, literally it's one of those, like, you know, Halloween, you, you put the candy bowl out and you're like, I'm not gonna eat this, this is for the kids. And every time you pass through like almond joy, payday, everything, it was like that with cinnamon rolls, you know, just be like, Oh, it's just one quick cinnamon roll like that. They were, they were absolutely incredible. So, uh, shout out to my wife, Victoria, cause she is an awesome cook and baker. And so that's what, that was the best thing I had this week. Sounds phenomenal. Very jealous. I could, I would be the same way. I almost stopped when I was at Walmart and got a whole you know, 24 pack of Krispy Kremes, but I resisted somehow. I don't know how. Gentlemen, thank you so much. This has been episode 25. Halfway Hashtag to shout 50 out to the Duke <laughs> of Xbox. Record this. Uh, my name is Daddy Diwali. You can find me at Daddy Diwali across all social media. Uh, joining us as the guest, our first official guest, 
was Bogus, Justin Bogus, Jay Bizzle. B- Bogus, where can people find you on social media? Uh, I'm kind of like uh, like Bubble Boy. I'm a, I'm a unicorn on social Okay, media, well, you so. can follow him on Xbox at Jay Bizzle 002. Uh, Bubble Boy, again, well, I don't know where he is. He's somewhere. I, I don't know. And then Chipotle Bear, where can people find you? You find me at Chipotle underscore Bear or Chipotle Bear on Instagram. Gentlemen, as always, see you online. See you online. See you online. <laughs> I let Je- I let Jabez say it for me. That was okay. my new trick. Thanks. This week. See you online, guys. <laughs> Xbox record this as a podcast created by Daniel Walensic. You can follow him at Daddy Diwali on all social media. The assistant to the co-host is Jose Martinez, and you can follow him at Chipotle underscore Bear on Twitter. The assistant to the assistant to the co-host is Chance Siegel, and you can follow him at Bubbleboy N7. You can follow the show at Xbox Record This on all social media. If you'd like to find out more about the show, visit XboxRecordThis.com.